Good morning, fellowship. If you must talk, talk to God. If you must whisper, whisper a prayer as we prepare for worship. Happy Sunday, Fellowship. I'm Mark Jones, and this is your weekly edition of FNN Fellowship News Network. Join us for our next In the Midst Grief Support Group meeting on Monday, April 15th at 7 p.m. RSVP on our website today to connect with others who understand. This group provides a safe space for sharing experiences and finding comfort during difficult times. You are not alone in your journey. Our medical ministry is offering free blood pressure screenings after today's service. Take a moment to prioritize your health and visit our screening station in the Fellowship Hall. Your well-being matters to us. Attention all seniors, join us on Friday, April 12th at 11 a.m. for what's guaranteed to be a fun afternoon of bingo, as well as a presentation addressing legal services available to you. You can RSVP with the church office to attend. Save the date. Fellowship Bible Academy is returning this month. FBA is a host of special classes that take you higher in your Christian education journey. Registration will be live starting next Sunday. We are praying for the family of Mr. Anthony Singletary, the husband of Mrs. Doretha Sutton Singletary. Please keep this family and all those who have experienced the loss of a loved one in your prayers. If you have experienced the loss of a loved one, please notify the church by calling the church office or completing our bereavement notification form on our website. And now we have some special announcements for you. Check them out. Get ready to rev up the fun and strengthen your bond at our Soulmates Marriage Ministry event, Accelerate Your Marriage. Calling all married couples, join us for an unforgettable evening of fellowship and excitement at K1 Speed in Mokina on Saturday, April 13th. Heart pounding go kart races, mouth watering food, and the company of other couples on the same journey as you. All for just $50 per person or $100 per couple. Come hungry for fun, laughter, and maybe even a little friendly competition. Spots are limited, so go register today on our website and let's accelerate the joy in our marriages together. Join us for food, fun, fellowship, and prizes. A full morning of motivational financial topics to help you with your wealth journey. Come meet the credit union team and fellowship with other credit union members, family, and friends. Tickets are just $15. Please visit our website today to purchase your tickets. And remember, wealth looks good on you. Our Kings and Priests Men's Ministry is inviting all males to attend a Brothers Game Night. This event is scheduled for April 19th from 7 to 9 p.m. It'll be an evening of fun, board games, food, and fellowship that you do not want to miss. RSVP on the website. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, family. Get hyped for Good Life's Young Adult 90s theme takeover April 21st at all services. Our Good Life ministry, ages 21 to 39, is stepping up to serve in every way. If you're in this age group, hit up fellowshipchicago.com to sign up to serve. Although this is a young adult takeover, the 90s theme is for everybody. Bust out your freshest 90s gear, think asymmetrical bobs, French rolls, high top bass, track jackets. If you have Good Life merch, pair it with your 90s gear and rep the ministry and the era. Don't worry if you don't have Good Life merch, we'll have it for sale. Let's honor God and black culture together, April 21st at all services. For questions, email us at goodlife at fellowshipchicago.com. Hey y'all, it's Lady Bree. I'm so excited to announce to my sisters, my ladies, that we are about to have our women's retreat June 1st. So ladies, I need you to register. Registration opens March 7th, and our registration fee is $100. If you go on our church's website, you will get all of the details of what the registration fee will cover. So make sure you attend this powerful, dynamic women's retreat where we're going to renew our mind, bodies, and soul. I hope to see you there, Jill first. Peace. Join us for an 
unforgettable evening aboard the Odyssey Lake Michigan on Friday, September 6, 2024 for our Cruising with the Ship dinner cruise. Set sail in style with our all-black, classy, and chic attire theme. Boarding at 6.15 p.m. for a journey from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. There will be great food, lively entertainment, and captivating views. All for $140 per person. Ages 21 and up are welcome as we cruise to celebrate our 74th church anniversary. Visit our website to purchase your tickets. Well, that's a wrap for this week's edition of FNN. Please check out the church website and our social media for these announcements and so much more. And for real-time updates, you can text Fellowship Chicago, that's one word, to 55949. And as we move forward, let's stand on our feet and worship the Lord together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless God's holy name. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, our Lord is worthy to be praised. Good morning, fellowship, family, and friends. Let us go to God in prayer. Most loving, gracious, and kind God, how we bless your name. We honor you, we bestow you, we worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, God, for blessing us to make it through the week to come to this place to worship you. We thank you, God, for blessing us that when we stray from your ways, that you bless us with your grace, your love, and your mercy. And so now, God, we ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit to fall fresh. We're asking that you would bless every aspect of this service. Bless the preach word that would go forth today, God, that it may liberate some man, woman, boy, or girl. This is our prayer, and we offer it in the name of Jesus, as together we say, amen. Let's go to worship.
Anybody grateful for Jesus this morning? Come on, let's clap with the choir. Come on. Come on, come on. Thank you. Listen, we're so grateful to be alive, I don't know what to do. Welcome to the first Sunday of April. Aren't you glad the Lord brought you to another month? Thank you, Jesus. Because we're grateful, because we're blessed, we want to spread some of that around. Can you find you about four or five people and just tell them, good to see you today. You can dap them up, you can hug them, you can shake the hand. You can just tap them on the shoulder. Tell them, good to see you today. Come on, put a smile on your face and give God some praise for bringing us through another month, bringing us through another week, and we give God praise for it. Come on and let's give God praise in this house. We're so, so grateful for another day, another day's journey. You may be seated in God's presence. Happy Sunday. I don't take any day for granted. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Here's another scripture I like. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And this is how I'm going to do it when I get there. Enter into his gate. I don't need to warm up. I don't need my song to be sung. I don't need my preacher to be preaching. Just as soon as I get through the door, I'm going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And I'm going to enter into his courts with praise. I'm going to be thankful unto him. And I'm going to bless his name. Now, why y'all this loud this early? Because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth, his faithfulness endures to all the generations y'all y'all 1045 just come with bad intentions every week y'all 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 don't know how to act y'all don't know y'all don't know how to act i'm so grateful to be here all our first time guests and friends would you just wave at us wave at us wave at us wherever you are first time guests and friends if you see somebody's hand just wave tell them i'm glad you made it thank you thank you thank you it's first Sunday of April. God blew our minds last week. We had a resurrection for the books, did we not? As long as I'm alive, I'm going to never, I will never forget Resurrection Sunday 2024. 151 people connected to Jesus, connected to this church. That's something to celebrate, y'all. In a world where churches are dying and declining, help me thank God for 151 spiritual decisions that the Lord allowed us to witness. If Mama Lou was here, she would say, to God be the glory for the great things that God has done. And we're having our communion on this Sunday. 
And in every chair, there should have been an element for you. I want you to prepare your hearts and your minds for communion in this moment. And um, last week, I preached a sermon entitled, anybody remember? <laughs> Exchanging memories on Easter morning. And do you know what Jesus told his disciples when they shared that last supper together? He told them, do this in remembrance of me. I want you to pause for a moment and just remember Jesus. He's an educator and an emancipator. He'll teach you and he'll get you out. <laughs> Exodus was a deliverance from captivity, but Calvary was a deliverance from sin and death. And I don't know about you all, I'm glad neither sin nor death has the last say over my life. Uh -huh. Me and the devil got in a tussle. But I won. And because of Jesus, graves are now just a passageway. Reverend John Jowett, popular preacher of the late 1800s, wrote, because of Jesus, death is now transparent. And we can look straight through it and see life on the other side of it. Mm, old death, where's your sting? I'm trying to hold it together. Old grave, where is your victory? Thanks be unto God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that has given us the victory. And that's not the end of it. Now therefore be steadfast. I know you got a lot going on, but be immovable. Always abounding. I'm just talking about Jesus. Because I'm, 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 I'm sick of sad saints that act like it's nothing but losses and despair. Oh, no, no, no. You got victory, child of God. No, no, no. Ain't nothing wrong being sad, but, but you can't be eternally sad. No, no. Look at your neighbor and say, you have victory. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Tell them you have the victory over death, sickness. Mama Maple Davis, Mother Maple Davis, one of our oldest members, joined this church, I believe it was 1952. She has not been able to be here since maybe late November, early December, the doctors called the family in in December and said, we don't know if mama's going to pull through this one. Mother Maple Davis is in church today. 95 years young. Ninety-five years young. Look, 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 at, look at this hat, y'all. Look at this hat. To God be the glory. Sit down, mama. Sit down, mama. Sit down. Sit down, mama. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, I told you you got victory. Mother Maple Davis's favorite song is Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. And I know y'all prepared something else. But let me just be spontaneous. Jesus keep stand for communion. Me near the cross. Mm, there's a prayer 
just found precious fountain ten and it's free to, to all the healing stream free to all mm, a healing stream land stream it flows from Calvary's mountain flow you got it from Calvary Breathe my Near the cross I watch and wait Verse 4 Near Near the cross I watch and wait I watch And wait And wait Hoping, trusting, ever Hope Being trust Sing ever, sing ever till I reach that golden stream. Here I reach. Talk about going to heaven. That gold, that golden strand, and strand is just beyond the river. Just yes, sir. Beyond. That's old school right there. The river. Oh, in the cross. In the cross. Keep me in the cross. In the cross. Be my glory ever. Be. Come on, church. My glory. Till my rapture, the tears, my raptured soul, I'ma be caught up one day. My rapture. One of these old days, I'll find rest. Where is it beyond? Anybody want to go to heaven one day? I know we think all the best things are down here, but one day we're going home in the cross, in the cross, in the cross. Some of us got loved ones over there in the cross. Oh, be my. Y'all sound mighty good, fellowship. Till my raptured soul hear One of these old days I'll find rest be on the Anybody grateful for the cross? It was at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I'm happy all the day. In your hand you have two elements. One representing the body, one representing the blood. And I'm grateful today for both of them. I'm grateful that we are a part of the body of Christ and I'm grateful that we have blood over our lives. I'm grateful for the blood. At 94, you can still come back when doctors think it's over because the blood works. Yeah. You can lose it all and still come back again from nothing because the blood works. You're in your right mind after all you've walked through because the blood still works and I, I, I listen I'm, I'm, we gonna have communion in a minute but just listen to your pastor I'm trying to tell y'all 
Is some folk out here scared because there's earthquakes and solar eclipse tomorrow? Let me give you the Bible. No man knows the day or the hour when the Lord is coming back. You, you can just save that barbershop talk, save the beauty shop talk, get off Facebook and Instagram fighting with people about what this means. It's an earthquake because there are tectonic plates at, in the foundation of the earth and they shift it. You got an earthquake. Solar eclipse happened because the moon is going to get in front of the sun just for a minute. And that ain't the first time something got between you and the sun. But it only can stay there for a minute. Yeah, and y'all, y'all better leave me alone today. And I'm trying to tell you everything is going to be just fine. So tell your neighbor before we take this communion, tell them whatever you worried about. I promise you, everything's going to be just fine. And that goes for solar eclipses, earthquakes, families, children, marriages, bills, jobs, stress, disappointment, despair, sickness, illness, cancer, lupus, diabetes, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, whatever it is, it's going to be all right. Because if it ain't all right down here, one day, I'm going to catch wings and I'm going home to be at rest. Let's eat the body of Christ together. And we're going to eat it because everything's going to be all right. Chew a little bit. Now let's drink the blood together because it still reaches to the highest mountain. Still flows to the lowest valley. And after you drink it, I want you to tell everybody it's going to be all right. There are ambassadors at the end of every row about to pass down a receptacle. Put your leftovers in that receptacle. Pass it all the way down. And just hug one more person. Tell them everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Yes. Yes, it will. He'll give me heal. Wonderful rest. He'll give me, he'll give me, he'll give me. You may be seated, glorious. He'll give me, he'll give me, he'll give me. Sanctify. One of these old days he'll give me. Everlasting rest. He'll give me, he'll give me, he'll give me. Glorious rest. Right now is not the end here. Everlasting. When I get through fighting down here, he'll give me glorious rest. He'll do it now. He'll do it later. Marvelous. He'll give me. Sanctified. He'll give me, he'll give me, he'll give me marvelous. He'll give me rest, he'll give me glorious. He'll give me everlasting. When I'm through serving down here, I'm going home marvelous. I'm going on home one of these old mornings and it won't be long sanctified we don't like talking about heaven till we get to the funeral but let me tell you something this world is so crazy down here this world is not my home I'm just a stranger passing on through I'm glad my grandparents made it. I'm glad my daddy made it. I'm glad some of my loved ones made it. I'm glad some of your children already made it. But one day, we gonna catch up with them. And oh, what a joy. Oh, what a joy. Oh, what a joy. Oh, what a joy. 
And until we get there, how about one more person say, everything going to be all right. Hold on, daughter. Hold on, son. Hold on, mama. Hold on, daddy. Everything going to be all right. That's why you rejoice when it's over down here. When I sung my last song, served my last service, given all I could give, I'm gonna get two wings to veil my face. Two wings to veil my feet. Two wings to fly away. And it's gonna be all right. Yes, yeah, it will. I feel that in my feet. It's gonna be all right. He'll give me, he'll give me, he'll give me, he'll give me glory. He'll give me, he'll give me sanctified rest. He'll give me. Glorious. He'll give me, he'll give me everlasting. He'll give me, he'll give me wonderful. He'll give me rest. Everlasting. He'll give me. Y'all excuse me, he's gonna give me anointing rest. He'll give me one that necessary. Yeah. Joyful, joyful. He'll give me rest. Marvelous rest. You confuse the devil when you start shouting about the afterlife. Because he thinks he's going to scare us. No, 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 no. When this earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved, I got another building. A house not made with hands. Fight your good fight. Keep the faith. Follow through your course. And when it's over, it's laid up for you in glory. A crown of righteousness. Yeah! Yeah! Hug somebody and say everything. You hug somebody you ain't hugged yet. Walk down that aisle a minute. Find you somebody and tell them everything. If the world ends tomorrow, I'm all right with Jesus. Yeah! Hey, I'm happy and I don't care who knows it. If everything goes down, I know one day I'm going up. Yeah! Yeah! Jesus, yes! Now this time, hug yourself, say, self, everything, 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 gonna be all right. A bill thing, a house thing, a child thing, a marriage thing, a divorce thing, a financial thing, a health thing. If there's a thing, he can fix it. I know I'm telling the truth this morning. I don't need no witnesses right through here. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like 
sea billows roll. What ever my life thou hast taught me to say it all is well excuse me a minute all is well yeah It is well. It is well. watching over me I wouldn't have made it through some of the things I went through but all night and when I woke up all oh, every day every day I, I know Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I'm glad the angels keep watching. I know this old school, I'm sorry. Over me. When you go back to the doctor's office, remind them. I once was blind, yes, once was blind, but now, now I'm glad I can see, cause I'm glad the
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I think the Lord needed to grab somebody this morning and just remind us that there's some eternal promises that fit every one of your external problems. Mm -hmm. I said there's some eternal promises that fit every one of your external problems. Mm -hmm. So when they hold stress up to you, you hold heaven up to them. You say, keep on now, keep on. This ain't gonna be this way forever. <laughs> yeah, when they bring you mess, you, be, you pull up grace. You have some eternal things on your side. To God be the glory. Now, that's how you have communion service. <laughs> Do this in remembrance of Jesus. I want to jump into this word. I don't, it's not going to be a long word, not a deep word, but I'm starting this series, um, Sermons on Sight, where I have literally received 65 topics from you all, from this congregation of what would be helpful for me to cover over the next two months while we're walking together. And so the sermon today is the first of this series, Sermon on Sight. On the fourth Sunday, I'm literally going to get topics while I'm in church from our youth that I'm going to address on sight. I will not have a time to prepare for the message, but I'm going to preach the message on sight. The other Sundays leading up to the fourth Sunday, I'll just keep reviewing my 65. So don't, so don't get no ideas now. You had your chance. I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. They, they, they were so, some of them were so deep. I said, now, Lord, uh, this is a lot. But, um, but I want to begin this sermon series. I'm excited. All our guests and our friends, I'll share some things with you all later. But can I just flow with this Holy Ghost? And uh, to all our guests and friends, to my wife's Delta Line sisters, this is the most saved Delta Line I've ever known. I didn't even know Deltas came to church like that until I got to Chicago. Happy, uh, happy Delta anniversary to all of you. God bless. God bless you. Come on, show some love. I'm not even going to ask where the cues are today. I'm not even going to get into that. Come with me to Luke 24, to God be the glory. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Stand with me. Some of y'all got what you need already. You're like, Pastor, low, low key, we can may your struggles keep you. I'm good, Rev. You, everything gonna be alright. That's all I needed to hear. Uh, but there's a word that I think is gonna help you even more so. Uh, listen to this, 24, Luke 24, verse 1 through 5. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, what, what happened? What happened? They did not find the body. Nothing was there. It was empty. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. Of course, we know those men were angels. And the angels asked them this question, so profound. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Thank you, maybe seated. Why are you, why, what, what you doing over here? Why are you looking for living things in dead places? <laughs> what, you, what, you, what, you, what you doing over here? He's not here. He is risen. Um, let me set this up and then it'll make sense as I give you my title. I received 65 topics that people want me to cover. Some of the topics were so similar that I'm clustering some of these topics together in this message. Somebody wrote to me and said, Pastor, could you talk about troubled minds while trying to continue to trust God, people and situations get the best of me, but I trust God to help me to stay encouraged that he's working it out. 
N next one asks, could you talk about toxic relationships? Knowing when enough is enough. Next one asks, could you talk about relationships and breakups because it can be difficult to recover from? Yeah. Next person asks, how to get through an unhealthy relationship? And putting all of these together, right from our congregation, I want to talk today from this thought, embracing emptiness. Tell your neighbor, sometimes you have to embrace emptiness. Dance with me for a few moments in this text. Let's just dance together through this thought. I, I was intrigued. Of course, we know this is the text that I preached last week. And while I was preparing for last week, um, preachers know sometimes you can, the hardest part of preaching is what not to preach. You see so much that you have to say, I can't do that now. Cause that's a whole, no, that's a whole, as we say in Georgia, that's a whole nother sermon. And while I was studying for the sermon last week on Exchange of Memories on Easter morning, some hit me. I said, isn't this something that these women show up to an empty place expecting something to be there? It is the most uh, discombobulating experience to keep showing up to a place or a person looking for them to give you something that they don't have. <laughs> empty. She keeps showing up to the job, looking for fulfillment, and it's empty. Keep showing back up to that relationship, and that human being that you love so much has absolutely nothing to reciprocate back to you because you are an ocean person hanging with a puddle. And when you're with puddle people and you have ocean intimacy to give, you're going to always feel like we're not on the same. The math ain't math then. What happens when I keep showing up to a place looking for it to give me something, offer me something, and it can't because it's empty? And it needs to be empty. But it's a hard thing to wrap your mind around when you keep going back to the tomb, going back to the job, going back to the relationship, going back to the marriage, going back to the whatever, the connection, the family dynamic. Because some of us, as I said in an earlier sermon, some of us, is your, 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 your issue in the interpersonal, whenever you hear the word interpersonal relationship, it just means your relationship with others. Intrapersonal is the relationship you have with yourself. But a lot of our interpersonal issues are in our family. And we pretend like everybody's mama's Claire Huxtable, and they not. And you, some of us are mad right now. You big grown with your big grown self. You're still mad at who you wanted your parent to be. And they never had the capacity to give you what you needed. So now you've been coping for decades trying to deal and mass a pain because you were looking for parents to give what parents are supposed to give. And, and it, it came up empty every time. You don't know emptiness until you love somebody that's fighting an addiction. And, and they're a good person when they're sober. But you don't know who they are when them drugs and that liquor kick in. And it's just empty. And you just keep showing up. You just keep coming back to... And, and you like the women at the tomb, all in the tomb looking. And, and, and finally, the angel just has to say to you, why, why are you looking for something living in a place that's designed for dead things? And so I read this quote that really helped me. Listen to this. You might want to write it down. Emptiness is not really empty. Emptiness is full of everything. That everything just isn't manifested. Okay, that's a little heavy. Emptiness is not really empty. Emptiness is full of everything. Meaning, sometimes I think that because I see emptiness, it means there's nothing there. But sometimes the emptiness that you're experiencing with that person or that place is full of everything you really need. Because there are usually lessons tucked away in strange places. So while it looks empty, it's not. It's full of everything God is trying to reveal. It just hadn't all manifested yet. So the relationship may look like it's empty. It's not. It's emptiness, but it ain't empty. It's speaking. You just ain't listening. Because emptiness is loud. But sometimes we ignore it because we're just hoping one day it'll change. One day it, they'll wake up. One day it'll be better. And sometimes it's empty and it's going to stay empty. But it takes us time for you to process the fact that I have got to grow up in God enough to just embrace the fact that this ain't going to give what it's supposed to give. It's all right. You ain't got to say man today because I'm walking right up in your house and I'm not knocking on the door. 
Here's another, here's another, here's another one. Er, er, earlier today, we had a, a, a bassoon player, an orchestra, a black orchestra, 125 black classical musicians are in town the week of April 15th through the 19th. So a bassoon player played Great Is Our Faithfulness. And as she was playing, I said, isn't that something? That's a woodwind instrument, a bassoon, large instrument, a double reed. All my woodwind players know what I'm talking about. And I said, here she is playing this melodious music, but without the holes and the empty spaces in the instrument, we would hear nothing. Some of us run from the fact that there are holes in you. You run from the fact that there's emptiness that you're living with. And God is saying, but do you know the music that can be manufactured if you just embrace the emptiness and the holes? If that instrument was full, it would be clogged and nothing could come through it. But God sometimes empty, he allow empty relationships, empty connections, so you can hear the music he wants to play in your life and stop accepting this mediocre music that people are trying to force you to accept. Can I preach to somebody with some standards? Can I preach to somebody that can say, now earlier in my 20s you might have played me like that, but now I'm not going to just, ex I'm not just going to hang around and accept whatever you're trying to throw at me because sometimes I need to hear God through the empty place. Here's a couple things and I'm done. Here it is. Here it is. When it's empty, when it's empty, sometimes we hold on to empty places and people because of what it used to hold for us. What it used to hold, what it used to be. You see the tomb? If you go back to Luke 23, verse 55, 56, if you go back to the scripture, it says, and they laid the body of Jesus in the tomb. They wake up on Sunday morning and they go back to where the body was. So it did used to hold something special for me. But now on Easter, it doesn't anymore. So instead of me staying at this empty tomb in this empty place, I got to accept the fact that what it is ain't what it was. And where we, where we are now in the present is not where we used to be in our past. So for me to hold on, hoping that we will one day get back to what it used to be, when you realize after a long period of time that it's empty and it's going to be empty, stop trying to force yesterday's ecstasy on today's reality. Preach, y'all. Stop trying to force yesterday's ecstasy on today's reality. Sometimes it's just not now what it used to be. All right, y'all don't like me. Here it is. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Sometimes things are empty because it's already served its purpose. It's already served its purpose. No, no. Anybody that grew up in black church for two minutes heard some black preacher somewhere tell you on Friday, Jesus died. And then if they're a real good black preacher, they're going to ask you a rhetorical question that nobody ever answers. Didn't he die? Ayana, then they're going to describe everything that happens when he died. The moon dripped in blood. The graves opened and the earth vomited up the dead. He died to the earth reeled in rock. He died till he stumbled like a drunken man. He died until the S-U-N stepped back behind the midday black sky because two suns can't shine at the same time. He died. Until the centurion soldier looked up and said, surely this must be the son of God. He died. He said, and the old preacher down in Georgia said, because Jesus told him, if you think I'm going to fight, nail my hands. If you think I'm going to run, nail my feet. He said, but whatever you do, don't lift this cross up because if I be lifted up from the earth. Oh, y'all grew up in the black church too? I draw all people. He died. Then they took him off the cross and they put him in Joseph's borrowed tomb told you last Sunday on Easter it was borrowed because they only needed it for the weekend he was not designed or created to stay in that tomb so you showing up looking for Jesus in a place where he was called to conquer meaning the tomb served the purpose for a minute and once it served the purpose for the few days he got to get up he's gone can you be mature enough to accept the fact that some of the emptiness you feel in your relationships, your connections, your intimate circles, your friendships, your family, whatever, it served its purpose. So don't get to the end of it and then get bitter and want to get on Twitter and Facebook and tell everybody everything that's ever been wrong. It wasn't always bad. 
When, it, when that thing was fresh and new, it was my man, my man, my man. Period, we out, it's us, selfie. Look at the dinner, ooh, I'm about to tear this up. Ooh, we out here. Bro, man, she thick as grits, cuz, man. Bro, I think she the one, bro, I think she the one, bro. That thing turned left and all of a sudden, bro. She keep calling me, bro, man. I told her don't call me no more. I don't block on everything. She calling me from other numbers. If I'm lying, I'm flying. And who's mature enough to say, I thank God for that season. I'm glad that season is no longer because I learned some necessary things in that toxic dysfunctional heartbreaking season but it served its purpose now you start dating for substance and not for shallow superficial stuff now you realize yes she is thick as grits but i don't need to i don't need you just to be thick as grits i need to know did you do your taxes do you have a job what church do you go to do you pray at all how are you when you're mad? What do you do when you don't get your way? Are you a thrower? Are you a cusser? Are you a fighter? Are you violent? First date questions. Does the person you've broken up with know that you've broken up with them? We out here now. Now you ask questions that matter. Now you find people with substance. Some of y'all got a list and it's about to ruin your life. He got to be 6'2". He got to make over six figures. He need to drive a... Uh -uh, he can't drive no Toyota. No, uh -uh, no, no, no. He need Mercedes and Lexus. He need... And you, you and a Honda talking about he better have Mercedes. Them, you. You in red bottoms with no health insurance, no life insurance, at the mall every other week. And if you died, we got to get a cash app and a GoFundMe. My point is, it taught you something. So sometimes when you come to church and rejoice, don't just rejoice because you came out of it. Rejoice that you learned something while you were in it. That's why some of y'all shouting. You sitting behind that person wondering, did it take all that? If you knew what I had to learn in my last chapter. Come on, don't holler. Please don't leave me out here. We out here together now. Let me holler at the 239 of you who can say, God, thank you for every lesson I earned in my last chapter because it served a purpose. Now I pray. Now I focus on you. Now I don't put people before you. I know my Bible is better than Bacardi. I know that scriptures will hold me more than vodka and kettle one. I know this message is better than a margarita because of what I've been through. Sometimes we hold on empty places and people because of what it used to hold. Sometimes things are empty because it's already served its purpose. The tomb did what the tomb was supposed to do. It was never supposed to keep it forever. Number three, sometimes when things are empty, we must emotionally analyze how we truly feel. I love this. Tell somebody, be for real. What I can't do in this is tell you move on. I can't be trite. I can't try to play you because if you're a human being and you love deeply and you really are an ocean person and you've been giving your love to puddle people it hurts when you keep showing up wanting something to have life in it but they don't have the capacity for life it was never called to be a place for life So what they do in verse 4 is when they realize the stone is moved, when they realize ain't nobody in here, verse 4 says, and they were perplexed. 
See, some of y'all rush, rush past that. Oh, he got up. He got up. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who moved the stone? Where the body at? Last time I was here, I saw the body in, in there. Ain't nobody? Ain't nobody? I'm trying to, because when you've really been in a relationship, that thing will make you perplexed. And, and I want to tell you, that's why I recommend therapy. That's why I recommend you talking to trusted friends, trusted friends, trusted friends, trusted friends, trusted friends, trusted friends, trusted friends. And it ain't about one or two of those. Because every friend you think you got, got a friend that might be closer to them than you are. Now don't tell nobody. I say, I, you ain't hear this from me. But you got to get it out. Deal with the perplexity. Because watch this. When you admit that you're perplexed and you have questions and it hurt and it bothered you and it's hard because somebody telling you, well, just move on, leave. Yeah, that's easy when you halfway loved. But when that thing deep and y'all got playlists together, y'all got songs and the wrong song come on, you're the coffee that I need in the morning. <laughs> turn that off. Turn that off. <laughs> so beautiful. That <laughs> thing deep. I heard a man on, on Instagram yesterday, so his nephew asked him, Unk, you ever been in love before and got your heart broke? He said, man, I did everything but died. <laughs> it's real. Breakups, divorces feel like death. So I don't stand here telling you, move on, get up, get away. No. Stand right there at that empty place and say, now, how did I get here? And what is God trying to show me here? And guess what God will do? He'll send an angel. To help you interpret what it is you're going through. And usually that message, because that's all an angel is, is a messenger. Am I helping somebody? The angel's going to look at you with all your confusion meant. All of that entanglement, all that confusion meant, all that stuff going through your head. And the angel going to ask you this. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Why you keep expecting somebody that doesn't have the capacity to love you to give you the love they've never really been able to give? Because sometimes, y'all, it was never love. It was just real good lust. Why you keep looking for the living among the dead? Why you keep... Why? You keep expecting him or her to change. Why? She done had anger issues since the first date. She got mad at the waitress at the restaurant when they didn't refill her coat quick enough. She been snapping since day one. Why you keep looking for the living among the dead? Why you waiting on your daddy to apologize? Your mother is deceased. Why are you holding a grudge about something that she can't even, she can't rectify it if she wanted to? Your healing is now your responsibility. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Why haven't you gone to therapy yet? Why are you in church playing on your phone when there's a preacher up here trying to set you free? Why are you barely listening? Why are you going to get in your car and say, where you at for brunch? Can we meet? Why, why are you going to go back? Why are you going to go back? I feel the Holy Ghost right through here because this, y'all think deliverance service is white sheets and falling out on the floor and foaming at the mouth. Deliverance can happen right up in here. Somebody can make up their mind. The season of you playing me is over. The season of me walking around with low standards and expectation is over. And you ain't going to treat no Tiffany jury like I'm Claire's. I'm a bottle baby. This is not Timex. And if you want to be with a real man, you got to become a real woman. And if you want a real woman, you got to grow up and be a real man. Holla at your boy. Everybody got to grow up in this thing. 
But what we're not going to do is keep having tone talk and deadly dialogue and toxicity in this relationship. Somebody either going to have to grow up or somebody going to have to go out. Preach, child. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. They sitting there acting like they don't hear me. But that person right beside you is saying, he up in my business today. And praise God for those of you in healthy marriages and healthy relationships. Can we give a quick praise for healthy men, healthy women, healthy bonds, healthy families, healthy marriages, healthy singlehood. Praise God for the healthiness. And I speak healthy connections in your next season. Dysfunction will not be your eternal reality. But you can't hear what you won't reveal. I'm done. Here it is. Sometimes this emptiness, last one, sometimes this emptiness we find in certain places and people remind us that we are not empty. We're not empty. Just because the place is empty don't mean you empty. The tomb is empty, but these women still have a voice. They still have memories. They still have, stop talking about the women in the text. Mary, the mother of James, Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, according to the Luca narrative, it says these sisters left and went and told their story. That means they still got a voice left. They still have their minds left. Ooh, wait a minute. Because some of this stuff will make you think you're losing your mind. God told me to tell you, your mind is just fine. And you're going to need your mind to I lost my mind. No, no, no. You ain't lost nothing because you're going to need your whole mind for the next chapter. And we're not going to let the death and the confusion and the mess and the dysfunction of chapter 23 and the crucifixions define the rest of our story. He is alive. And I'm going to tell it everywhere I go. And I'm alive. Because following this close to Jesus could put my life in danger. Some of y'all ought to be glad I got something left. After all I lost, I'm, I'm about to identify the 200 that really are my ride or die right through here at the 1045. I got something left. I am not completely empty. I'm not completely deflated. I'm not completely destroyed. I'm not completely over. My story ain't over. This too shall pass. I can't and wear a white dress and get married again things can absolutely be better I can date again I can dream again I can love again I can try again I can laugh again is there anybody up in here that can say the place is empty the person may be empty but I'm not empty greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world and you ought to give God praise. All you've been through, you still have love left. You still have life left. That's the end of my sermon. I want to thank you for listening to it. Can we give God praise for his word? Come on, give God praise for his word. Everybody's standing. I'm so glad God gave me this revelation. Tell somebody, you're not empty. You're not empty. You're not empty. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to move on, but I feel the Holy Ghost. Because a message like this hits so close to the reality that many people live in that they don't talk about. So some of y'all feel like I've wasted years. I wasted years. Wasted time. I invested in an empty situation and I didn't get anything back. I, no, I got no return on my investment. I want you to be a preacher for 10 seconds and tell your neighbor, look them in the eye like they owe you money. And you waiting on them to pay you back them $20 today. Come on. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. And say, neighbor, God never allows us to waste years tell them God said I will restore the years that the canker worm and the locust and the caterpillar tried to take from you tell them receive this season of restoration receive this season And then put a praise on their restoration. Because some of this emptiness almost took some of us out of here. 
But God said, I got more life for you. I have more joy for you. I have more adventure for you. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I hope I help somebody today. I hope I help you think differently today. The doors of the church are open. If you're here and you don't know Jesus, Jesus is the only one that can turn a tomb into a testimony. Jesus will knock the hole out the back of the tomb. And what others walked in and stayed in, you can walk through. Y'all hear me? I said, we can walk through it now. Every dead end is not a dead end with Jesus. It's just a bend in the road, not the end of a road. I like that kind of Jesus that won't let my story end in failure. If you need Christ, come on, walk out, shake my hand. If you need a church home, come out, walk out, shake my hand. If you need a fresh start and you say, God, I've been off. I've let people take over my life, try to ruin my life, and I'm coming back. God bless you. God bless you. Stay right there. Stay right there. Come on, let's thank God for young people. Come on, you can stay right there. Stay right there. Smile at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I know the preacher was talking to us. Tell him if you need to walk out, if you need a fresh start, I'll gladly walk with you. Say, come on, let's go down here and start over. Come on, you can get a fresh start. Come on, my sister. Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, my sister. Come on. You can make it. You can make it through this. God bless you. You can make it. You can stay right here. You can make it. Make it through this. Make it through this. My story ain't over. Welcome. God bless you. My story. My, my story. My story. Come on, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor. My story ain't over. My story ain't over. My story ain't over. My, 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 my story. Story ain't Story ain't Hey, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. This too. This too. It shall pass. Come on, my brother. It shall pass. This too shall pass. This too. Welcome. This too. It shall pass. It shall pass. Hey, you can make it through this. You can make it through this. You, 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 you can make it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Hey, my story ain't over. My story ain't over. God bless you. My story ain't over. Bless you. Story ain't. Bless you. God bless you. Welcome home. This too shall pass. This too. Shall pass. Now everybody clap low. You gotta see yourself doing better before you do better. You have to see yourself feeling better before you feel better. Hey, come on, everybody clap low. It won't be empty forever. It won't be empty forever. One more time, you can make it through this. You can make it through this. You can make it through this. 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 Hey, my story ain't over. My, 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 my story. My, 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 my story. Story ain't over. Story ain't over, hey. My story ain't over. My, 
Thank you, Lord, for life. Thank you for new life. He brought me a long way. He brought me a long way. Just think about your journey. He brought me a long way. Didn't he bring you a long way? He brought me a long way. He brought me a long way. God brought me a long way. Listen, let's thank God for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spiritual decisions that are happening today. I just want to say personally, I praise God for each and every one of you. I hope this message is one of those messages you go back to and just listen over and over again to remind yourself that just because what I went through was empty, doesn't mean I'm empty. And a sneak preview for next week is part two of the same sermon. Can I give you a sneak preview? You ready for this? Don't tell nobody I told you. Absence proves his presence. I know he's alive because some stuff ain't here no more. You shout over what you have, shout over what you don't have and what you don't have to deal with because Jesus is alive. Wait a minute, that's too much. We'll talk about it next week. I welcome you, but just know this emptiness was necessary for your fullness. This emptiness was necessary for your fullness and I pray God keeps you full of everything you need to be successful in this life. Fellowship, how y'all feel about our new members, our new family? Brothers, sisters, sons and daughters, if you all would turn to my right, your left, our First Touch ministry is waiting with joy and excitement to welcome you into the ship. Let's welcome them in, let's welcome them in, let's welcome them in. You may be seated for a quick second. Thank you so much. God is so good. Did y'all get anything out the message today? We're going to get ready for offering now. Deacons, thank you so much. But let me say this as deacons are coming and we're preparing for offering. Don't be that person in church talking about, Ooh, child, I wish such and such was here to hear this. Have you ever had that moment in church? Ooh, they should have been here. Where are they? No, let it hit you first. And then when it hits you, you become the word made flesh. And people will see your life. And they'll say, oh man, it worked for her. It worked for him. It must work for me. Well, I thank God for each and every one of you. Let's prepare to give and we're going to get on out of here today. Um, there's been a long time argument going on in Chicago. Keep it right there, Willie. Just bring me down. Long time argument as you're preparing to give. Uh, over which chicken is better and um, there's some that would have you believe that it's Harold's or Sharks or JJ's but I went to that Uncle Remus yesterday You believe what you want to believe. But as for me and my house. Anybody glad the fast is over? Lord, I said, God, I lost so much weight in the fast. Now I'm about to gain it all back. Sitting up here with Uncle Remus. 
Where is he so I can tell him thank you? Is he alive? He's not here no more. Thank you, Uncle Remus. I owe it all. I'm just kidding. Y'all pray for your pastor. If you can't laugh, you can't live. And that's the truth. I'm going to wait till next week to tell you what we did for the big catch because some of you got to catch up. You were waiting on the fifth. And the fifth has fifth. And now we are waiting on you to catch up and be a part of the big catch. Some of you have agreed and committed to sowing a thousand dollars. Some of you have committed to sowing 500. And some of you have committed to sowing $100. And I need everybody to keep their commitment. In January, almost through February, I preached about the day Jesus told them to launch out into the what? Deep and prepare for a big catch. And that's what we're trying to do in this season. God has some big things for us to do, but we cannot do it if we don't all get together. And so I'm pleased at the number where we are, but I will save telling you where we are until next week because I believe some of y'all are trying to catch up to the big catch. Do you pick up what I'm putting down? All right, catch on up and give if you're able to give. And if you're not able, look at the person beside you and say, let me hold something for forever. Let me hold this for forever. Don't even look for this. Don't, don't ever look for this back. Just let me hold something for forever. Lift your phone to the Lord, lift your gift to the Lord, and then we're gonna get on out of here. The one o'clock service starts at 1.15, and we're doing great. Is that time right, it's 12.04? For real? Wow, God is real. Lift that phone, lift that gift to the Lord. Repeat after me, God, I trust you. Come on, say it with your chest. Say, God, I trust you. And I am not giving as an obligation. I'm giving as an act of adoration. I just trust your word. And I know everything will be all right. I thank you in advance. For open doors, promotions, better jobs, multiple streams of income, come on, success in my business, creativity for more income, I claim it for my family and myself, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, deacons. They're already on post in the balcony. They're on post on the floor. Come on, let's so, 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 let's so. Everybody's sewing. Everybody's sewing. Everybody's sewing. Everybody's sewing. There's seven ways to give on the screen. I don't care if you sow three dollars, five dollars. Everybody, under the sound of my voice, I need you giving. I need you giving. I need you giving today. Let's give today. Let's give today give whatever you can if it's one dollar if that's all you have God will breathe on that one dollar trust what I'm saying don't just sit there and say no I ain't giving nothing no you got something to give 50 cent you got something to give you got something to give stop asking God to fill you up and you don't take care of God's house take care of God's house God takes care of our houses am I right about it holler back at me am I right about it amen amen Amen. 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 We getting on out of here in good time. All first time guests and friends, wave at us again, wave at us again, wave at us again. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for coming today. Anybody from out of town, wave at me. Anybody come from out of town? Come on, stand up, tell me where you're from. Tell me where you're from. We're about to have good country church. Just tell me the state or the city, whatever you want to know. Houston, Texas. Come on, y'all give Houston a hand. D.C. area. Y'all call it the DMV, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Y'all give the DMV a hand, the D.C. area, 
All right. Who else did I see? Don't be shy. We all family. Did I see somebody else? No. Now somebody else put their hand up. Is it you? You, you, it's not you. So nobody else from out the area? All right, okay, I'll leave you alone, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my bad. Who else? Come on, stand, stand up if you're from out of town. Stand up so I can easily identify you. Where you from? Jacksonville, Florida, come on. Woo, y'all have some good weather down there. Good weather. Anybody else from out of the state? Out of town? If you live in Kankakee, that is out of state. <laughs> hey, welcome. I know that was a long, long ride. You could be in Illinois in a whole nother country. <laughs> Come on, where you from? Just holler, just holler, just holler. Atlanta. Come on, ATL. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Anybody else? Well, God bless each and every one of you. As we leave today, let's keep in mind that we have so many uh, friends and family members to pray for in this season that are experiencing grief. Uh, we're praying for Mrs. Pamela Yarborough and the passing of her husband. Praying for Mr. Marcus Gatlin Jr. and Jamel McMurray Sr. and the passing of their grandmother, Miss Louise Gatlin. Mr. Marlon Price, praying for him in the passing of his sister, Miss Andrea Price. Uh, Mrs. Gail Hayes and her family in the passing of her son, Mr. James Turner. That funeral will be here at 10 on Wednesday. Uh, Miss Vanessa Rogers, her cousin passed. That's Deacon Tony Rogers' wife. Do I see, I see them both here today. God bless you, wave at us, Deacon Rogers, Mrs. Rogers. We love you, sending, sending prayers to you. Miss Beatrice, uh, Beatrice or Beatrice Keys services will be here on Friday at 10. Miss Doretha Sutton Singletary lost her husband in a terrible car accident. Mr. Anthony Singletary, Miss Doretha is so loving, so full of life, and we need to uh, cover her in this season as well. That funeral will be here on Saturday, April 13th at 10 a.m. Let everybody say amen. Amen. All of the events and things going on at our church, I want you to watch FNN so every Sunday we don't have to get up and repeat everything that you were supposed to hear on FNN. Let the church say amen. I'm going to go back here and shake some hands for a little while because I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And we're going to get out of this service and go home. Have a good week. Pray for me this week. I'm going home for a minute to clean my father's house. And if you've ever had to do that, that is just something you wish you could avoid, but you can't. So just whisper prayer for your pastor this week that God will give my brother and I strength and my family down in Atlanta. Uh, strength, energy, focus, peace to get the job done as his sons. Amen. I love y'all so, so much. Tell the person beside you, you look so good, I should have brought my camera. I love y'all. Let's stand and receive the benediction. May your struggles keep you near the cross. May your troubles show that you and I need God. May every battle end the way they should and may your bad days prove that God is good. I pray your whole life keeps on proving that God is good. Let everybody say amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Give the sanctuary choir a hand. They want fire today. I love y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody cooking some neck bones today? If you cooking some turkey neck bones, please come hug me and tell me where to go after church. Turkey necks, turkey neck bones, same thing. I'm coming to your house. Amen. Bless y'all. Thank you. Love you, love you, love you, love you.
Happy Sunday, Fellowship. I'm Mark Jones, and this is your weekly edition of FNN, Fellowship News Network. Join us for our next In the Midst Grief Support Group meeting on Monday, April 15th at 7 p.m. RSVP on our website today to connect with others who understand. This group provides a safe space for sharing experiences and finding comfort during difficult times. You are not alone in your journey. Our medical ministry is offering free blood pressure screenings after today's service. Take a moment to prioritize your health and visit our screening station in the Fellowship Hall. Your well-being matters to us. Attention all seniors, join us on Friday, April 12th at 11 a.m. for what's guaranteed to be a fun afternoon of bingo, as well as a presentation addressing legal services available to you. You can RSVP with the church office to attend. Save the date, Fellowship Bible Academy is returning this month. FBA is a host of special classes that take you higher in your Christian education journey. Registration will be live starting next Sunday. We are praying for the family of Mr. Anthony Singletary, the husband of Mrs. Doretha Sutton Singletary. Please keep this family and all those who have experienced the loss of a loved one in your prayers. If you have experienced the loss of a loved one, please notify the church by calling the church office or completing our bereavement notification form on our website. And now we have some special announcements for you. Check them out. Get ready to rev up the fun and strengthen your bond at our Soulmates Marriage Ministry event, Accelerate Your Marriage. Calling all married couples, join us for an unforgettable evening of fellowship and excitement at K1 Speed in Mokina on Saturday, April 13th. Heart pounding go kart races, mouth watering food, and the company of other couples on the same journey as you. All for just $50 per person or $100 per couple. Come hungry for fun, laughter, and maybe even a little friendly competition. Spots are limited, so go register today on our website and let's accelerate the joy in our marriages together. Join us for food, fun, fellowship, and prizes. A full morning of motivational financial topics to help you with your wealth journey. Come meet the credit union team and fellowship with other credit union members, family, and friends. Tickets are just $15. Please visit our website today to purchase your tickets. And remember, wealth looks good on you. Our Kings and Priests Men's Ministry is inviting all males to attend a Brothers Game Night. This event is scheduled for April 19th from 7 to 9 p.m. It'll be an evening of fun, board games, food, and fellowship that you do not want to miss. RSVP on the website. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, family. Get hyped for Good Life's Young Adult 90s theme takeover April 21st at all services. Our Good Life ministry, ages 21 to 39, is stepping up to serve in every way. If you're in this age group, hit up fellowshipchicago.com to sign up to serve. Although this is a young adult takeover, the 90s theme is for everybody. Bust out your freshest 90s gear, think asymmetrical bobs, French rolls, high top bass, track jackets. If you have Good Life merch, pair it with your 90s gear and rep the ministry and the era. Don't worry if you don't have Good Life merch, we'll have it for sale. Let's honor God and black culture together, April 21st at all services. For questions, email us at goodlife at fellowshipchicago.com. Hey y'all, it's Lady Bree. I'm so excited to announce to my sisters, my ladies, that we are about to have our women's retreat June 1st. So ladies, I need you to register. Registration opens March 7th, and our registration fee is $100. If you go on our church's website, you will get all of the details of what the registration fee will cover. So make sure you attend this powerful, dynamic women's retreat where we're going to renew our mind, bodies, and soul. I hope to see you there, June 1st. Peace. 
Join us for an unforgettable evening aboard the Odyssey Lake Michigan on Friday, September 6, 2024 for our Cruising with the Ship dinner cruise. Set sail in style with our all-black, classy, and chic attire theme. Boarding at 6.15 p.m. for a journey from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. There will be great food, lively entertainment, and captivating views. All for $140 per person. Ages 21 and up are welcome as we cruise to celebrate our 74th church anniversary. Visit our website to purchase your tickets. Well, that's a wrap for this week's edition of FNN. Please check out the church website and our social media for these announcements and so much more. And for real-time updates, you can text Fellowship Chicago, that's one word, to 55949. Have a great week.